everybody, we just got to Ayacucho. It is beautiful here, but we probably went through one of the most unenjoyable evenings, at least I can say in terms of my experiences in Latin America. I've been on plenty of buses in Ecuador, but um, this one was pretty tough, but we're here finally. We're excited to get to work, and we're gonna try to find a way to improve this. See you soon. Walking to a, um, to what I believe is a truck that will take us to Putis. We've got our whole crew here. We've got Jose Pablo, um, Marcela, um, Ian from the Advocacy Project, Dan from the BBC, and Tanya from the regional office in Ayacucho. And Ellen, who is doing her work in um, of doing a PhD from Indian University. And we're basically about to get on a truck and we will be heading over to Putis. Hey, how's it going? Short update on the Putis trip. We are actually waiting. We've been waiting at the um, regional office here in Ayacucho for a little bit. We've been trying to arrange some transport. Um, about two nights ago, though, we got word that there were some narco traffickers who were in the region who actually entered the Putis site, not realizing that the EPAF group was being guarded by 35 men from the military. And so we, at the moment, are going to reassess the situation, how what the safety is in the area. And um, we've been instructed by a lawyer um, with an organization that's working with EPAF that everything has been pretty much taken care of, that every, all the necessary precautions have been taken. Um, but we will be heading to the Puti site to reassess what the situation is and we will go from there. Just want to give an update. I am hiding behind a wall. Just good. I got you. <laughs> okay, okay, so EPAF, technical group, 1997. 1997. EPAF is, is set up as a technical group of the Coordinating Board of Human Rights Associations of Peru. Only in 2001 is that EPAF becomes EPAF with a name and is registered as EPAF, as a non-governmental organization. We always remain as a permanent member of the Coordinadora Nacional de Derechos Humanos. But there is a category there that is called as an invited member. So we have voice but no votes. And we prefer to be that because, see, we work for a number of organizations within the Coordinador as experts for them. It could be a conflict of interest or seen as a conflict of interest if we were also part of the, of the movement in terms of being able to shape the movement but with our votes. So we do not vote. So that, that was it. Um, so the 2001 is a path with that name. I mean, that comes uh, to life, but 1987 is a path without the name of a path that did exist. I mean, how would you define the mission of that path? I think that the main, the most important thing is that uh, we're fighting for memory. Understanding memory is a very inclusive, very dynamic, I mean, concept. Understanding that um, impunity, in a way, is an equivalent of uh, forgetfulness. If you do not know what actually happened, and if you are not be able to live through that and keep it as a, as, a, as a permanent thing, but also as a tool of change, I mean, you're nothing. You don't really know where you came from or where you go. We are on the way to Putis on what is probably one of the most gravelly roads I've ever been on. Um, if you take a look, I mean, it's just absolutely incredible. You see a river down there and, I mean, just expansive mountains. Just, I mean, absolutely breathtaking. Uh, we have spent the last few hours still on the way to Putis, talking about fundraising and anything we can do um, to, again, bring alive the stories of those disappeared during the Peruvian Civil War. There you see our executive director of the advocacy project and company. And so we will be continuing on. Um, hope you enjoy the view.